Stardust by Jeanette Fraser Hinshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. There's a little place in Dreamland where I dare not linger long, but I often wander by it while the daylight slips along. But whene'er I touch its border and admire its soft blue skies, there's a little sprite of mischief throws the stardust in my eyes. So I dally through the morning and ponder o'er my tea, comparing skyline colors with the matchless tints at sea. Then I turn to tasks unfinished. Then, with swiftness of surprise, I glimpse the little mischief throwing stardust in my eyes. I'm a sad and vexing problem to my partner and my friend, for they jolt me out of the cloudland to the busy world of men. But I find a well of pleasure in dreamland's sunny skies, and I love the little mischief who throws stardust in my eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Life by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Anthony Will. A little bit of sorrow and a little bit of song. Sometimes the way is very brief, sometimes it seems too long. A little bit of trouble, vague wanderings and fears. A little bit of rapture, mixed up with smiles and tears. Sometimes the way is stony, and the thorns are uppermost, but it's always worth the living, no matter what the cost. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fate the Spinner by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine. A solitary spinner sat in the weaving room, charged by the master craftsman with the fabric in the loom. She worked all day at the weaving till the hour was growing late. Then she left, the task unfinished, and me to a tangled fate. Perhaps some day the spinner who unwittingly tangled my doom with a stricken heart will remember the fabric, the web, and the loom. She'll gather the threads together, all golden and silver spun, tie all the ends with a rainbow, and bands from the moonbeams young. She'll weave in a little rapture, discard all the tears and pain, give me a crown for crosses, repair my loss with gain. Then, when the master craftsman ponders the loom a while, he'll give me a smile of magic, to win me the friends worthwhile. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Destiny by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Anthony Will. Tempestuous skies, pale clouds racing by, a wild, a windy day, a band of mist by sunbeams kissed and you, dear, far away. And, oh, believe, the purple eve brings visions of your face, my memory but tortures me with things that ne'er take place. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Pop by Jeanette Fraser Henschel Read for LibriVox.org By Tamara Kuba when Dad put on his coat and hat and say goodbye to me, he looked so sad you'd almost think twas for eternity. He looked so sorrowful and blue when the depot street car came and from the rear end platform he waved goodbye again. Then we went home and locked the door and say the atmosphere just reeked of his tobacco smoke. But yet the house was drear. We couldn't eat, just nibbled things, some cookies and a bun. We tried to read, but strange to say, the magazines were bum. Ma couldn't sleep, but just lay down, with all the lights turned on. The rest of us just wondered where our headaches all came from. When we awoke, our little flat was cold as all outdoors. The fire was out, someone forgot to do the evening chores. Then someone wished to know the time we missed the old tick-tock. 
and red with shame, my mother said. She didn't wind at the clock. They often say, what's home, without a mother's face. But there are lots of daddies too, great factors in their place. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Sweetheart's Name by Jeanette Fraser Henschel Read for LibriVox.org by Tamara Cooper So often at the mention of my sweetheart's name, though strangers cannot guess my inmost thought, I feel at times this cheek of mine grow pale, or in a sudden panic crimson heart. When careless hands from some stray page had cut, his lightness and a record of his fame, the hot tears pushed themselves adown my cheeks, and jeweled every letter of that name. Tis well enough when duties claim my mind, but how I love if switching hours that trace among the dancing shadows of my walls, each dear familiar feature of his face, the lips that never have and never will touch mine, those eyes so deeply tender but this pen could not do justice to so sweet a name. A wife could wish to wear no lovely gem. In sun-drift paths of memory I walk. I know it is folly and it gives me needless pain. Yet I'm prizing every little sweet reminder that bids me speak in dreams my sweetheart's name. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Grief by Jeanette Fraser Hinshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Nikisha Luckett. Grief. Oh, they say you're safe from harm, but they took you from my arm. They buried you beneath the coal and snow. My old heart nearly broke, and the tears nigh made me choke, cause I loved my baby so. And I was dreaming in the night, and I was a hugging of you tight. And the kissin' of your warm, sweet baby face. Then I wakes up in the gloom, and by the glimmer from the moon, I sees your empty cradle in its place. Oh, I surely think that God hid himself behind a cloud when he let them take my lambkin away. He surely done forgot, poor old mammy's lonely lot and the emptiness in this old heart today. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Censor by Jeanette Fraser Henschel Read for LibriVox.org by Tamara Cooper There is something of a tonic in your censor just like wine, and you'll find no yellow fabric. And this makeup stuff of mine. I may not be a soldier or commander of a fleet, but I'm one who loves a battle and I'll never know defeat. You may think you've laid and silenced one more nuisance with your pen, but believe me, lovely lady, I will just come back again. There is a something still more bitter than the sweetest thing is sweet. We who court success just drink it but never know defeat. Sense of bitter will just maybe, for everybody knows that a thorn is constant comrade to the sweetest flower that grows. So I'll take your written censor, call it by a name more sweet, line up once again for action, but never know defeat. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Rose by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Nikisha Luckett To a Rose Wine red in your heart, each petal apart, Looking drunk with your own sweet perfume. Summer's one queen on bowed stem of green, Beautiful spirit of June. Remembrance brings near past days that were dear, Amethyst evenings and summer night moons. 
Strange thoughts now obsess me as I stoop to caress thee and drink of your unmatched perfume. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Little Brown House at the Crossroads by Jeanette Fraser Henschel Read for LibriVox.org by Tamara Kuba The Little Brown House at the Crossroads Looks out from its cunning brown frame Through the drift of the years and life's changes Its attraction and charm is the same Wasn't it sweet in the days of old To seek its sheltering tender fold Stirring the embers when it was cold in the little brown house at the crossroads. The dear little house at the crossroads, dressed winsome in flower and vine, coming from out of the dreams I love, to capture this heart of mine. I can see it yet in the dripping rain, most shouting a welcome the nearer I came, down the gleaming pathway of mist and rain to the little brown house at the crossroads. And God, if I ever do get to heaven, and there's houses with cunning brown frames. Have one ready for me at the crossroads, and write just above it my name. Oh, it will be sweet when the doors open wide, and folks that I love round the old chimney side are stirring its embers, but only for pride of the little brown house at the crossroads. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Alone by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw, read for LibriVox.org by Riley. Quite often in his vague, elusive plan, the master measures off his space for man, in which no angel ever walks or smiles, encouragement along life's weary miles. Their pristine beauty he keeps safe at home, so in his direst plight, man seems alone. When he recalled from us his blessed son, our eternal testing work had just begun. We've had since then no heavenly vision bright. Seemed God in silent scorn turned off the light. So man through devious ways may search alone to find the path that leads him safely home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Goodbye by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Anthony Will Perhaps a friend is taking a journey far away It may be for a fortnight or only for a day You press their hand in parting while you smother back a sigh And the heart of you is calling Goodbye, goodbye The love we worship blindly with a pure sweet tender thought Then pleading though our lips be dumb But love's voice answers not then, stunned through years of silent grief, we wander aimlessly by, and suffer every time we hear, Goodbye, goodbye. It may be death has taken a loved one by the hand, and spirit like has led them into the silent land. We struggle with our sense of grief, and like lost children cry, across a new made grave today, Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Bayula by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Inkel To Bayula I never knew the house could talk in such a pensive way That piano stools and vacant chairs could find so much to say The silent little bedroom and books all seem inclined to shout at me their hunger for that little girl of mine. How could I know that ribbon bows could voice a grief today, and that I'd learn to know the things an empty chair could say? I'm glad to put a shadow that'll pass like summer rain, but tomorrow evening truly I will have you back again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Old Year, Goodbye to You by Jeanette Fraser Hensall Read for LibriVox.org by Chinmay I have always loved old poems, 
old melodies, old towers, and I adore old homesteads, old laces, and old flowers. I love the magic fairy tale that makes my heart beat true and yearn for old time comrades, but old year, I love you too. I am sad to see you going, you've meant so much to me, of sorrows, and I faced them with eyes too dimmed to see. You've given me full measure of gloom and such a few, of smiles and reassurance, but old year, I love you too. You've given me new crosses, placed them heavy on my heart, and I bore them sometimes flinching, knowing this to be my part. And I can't forget, old comrade, all the times we've drifted through. So here's my hand in parting, old year, goodbye to you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Instability by Jeanette Fraser Hensall. Read for LibriVox.org by Chinmay. I called thee friend in former days, but one thing I deplore, for reasons which I may not name, I call thee friend no more. With thee I shared each joy, each woe, in that remote, sweet time. Thy being held a vibrant chord, a tuned in pitch with mine. We mused alike, each mutual, though it seemed blended into one. But lo, the strings we loved so much are broken and unstrung. O oh, life, your shallowness oft gives one's thoughts a bitter trend. We would there were no theme named love, and no such word as friend. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Prayer by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Lord, this barren life of storm and stress is heavy with its weight of loneliness. If this is what I'm pleased to call your best, then let me go. And God, you've deemed me worthless of a place, and let me stagger through dim, endless space. Though I would run, you have denied the race, so let me go. And out of all the pain and bitter loss, the gall, the wormwood, the dull dross, I bear each day a new thorned crown and cross. Oh, let me go. And if my earnest plea you have denied, my petition you as worthless put aside. Oh, give me your sweet peace inside, if I must stay. And if, dear Lord, you bid me longer stay, oh, keep my feet within the narrow way, and cheer me on the long, dark, lonely day, if I must stay. And, God, I kindly would that you would unroll the cold gray mists that all wrapped around my soul, and, though I'm blind, you'd lead me to the goal if I must stay. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Garland for Glory by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Riley You bewilder the world with your section of blue. In my dreams you unfurl your bright stars to my view. Crimson bars daring us all to be true to live and endeavor and fight all for you, beloved starry banner of glory. May your colors and stars know no sorrow or shame, though the blood of our children must flow once again. May your standard be high and untrammeled your fame, till God the great master cries halt in the game. Victorious banner of glory. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Golden Rod by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw, read for LibriVox.org by T. R. Love on Valentine's Day, 2023. The Golden Rod. God was mixing up the colors that He wanted in the sky. Of blue He had a plenty in His storehouse up on high. With a lavish hand He spread it across the atmosphere, and the drippings from His brushes fell about the woodland here. Then the rain came down in April, made each paint drop dewy wet. Then they bloomed into that fragrant little flower, the violet. Then he searched his rarest gardens, where each gorgeous color grows. That's why we love the crimson paint he put into the rose. When he lifted up the curtain from the canvas in the west, it was flooded with the color all America loves best. For the gold he held too sacred for an ordinary job, so he crowded all its glory into the golden rod. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Love Letter by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine. Without being conscious I'm speaking, I walk yet ne'er notice the place. In crowds I'm so lonesome, yet seeing each feature of your loving face. And I'm longing to break each sweet memory with caresses so loving and true. But I'm hundreds of leagues in the distance, and constantly dreaming of you. I blindly perform every duty, but I long to get out and alone, when I'm yearning to have you embrace me, to kiss your sweet lips with my own. I'm consumed with the sweet living torture, and the rapture half longing, half pain, and the picture of our love and meeting, never more to be parted again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Toast by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw, read for LibriVox.org by Anthony Will. Why should we fear grim death's cold beer, and tremble at the same? It's in the plan for mortal man, why shouldn't we be game? Here's to the maze of golden days, of mirth and joy and laughter. So let's forget the grime, the sweat, also what's coming after. It's long been said, when one is dead, it's for a long, long time. Hearts pulseless lie, emotions die. Here's to your loves and mine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Daughter by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Riley. She's my sorrow, my laughter, my gloom, and my joy. And having no sons, she's my girl and my boy. She's my pest and my pleasure, my crown and my cross. She's down in life's ledger as profit and loss. She's resplendent with youth from her head to her toes. She's as good as the best. I'm her mother who knows. She's a trial, God bless her. But what is much worse? She's an enemy both to my pantry and purse. She's a tease and a torment, faults, blunders and all. God Lead, guide, and save her, lest worse should befall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Vagabond by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine. Oh, spring, why do you torture me with such a restless mind? You've made a vagabond of me. You're far from being kind. I can think of naught but mating birds and lovers by the pair. You sing, you dance, you call, you tease. You fill me with despair. A thousand voices call me. I'm in a roving mood. I'm reckless to a sad degree and far from feeling good. Spring, see what you've done to me. I'm wild to be away. I drive folks to distraction with the things I do and say. I want to walk in brown, bare woods among the stirring things, and startle early birds and see new wonders in the spring. 
My mind is absent from me. My soul has taken wing. My brain is dancing crazy with the tunes I want to sing. Sometimes I'm wild with pleasure. In a moment, I am sad. If God created all these moods, I wish he never had. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Happiness by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Anthony Will. Its cost is never measured, its truth no tutors teach, forever at our elbows, yet just beyond our reach. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. From One Woman to Another by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine. And when you came, rough-shod, green-eyed, and vulgar into my solitude of dreams, and after the fashion of your kind, you bade me look from out the rosy windows of my innocence. Perhaps you, in your wise way, called me ignorant. Then, for a while, for mine own ends, I matched deceit with your deceit, until I know you thought I lost my pose. But I, who walk the most in silence, speak as one who knows. And when you thought I was about to yield my own pure body to your wanton ways, in one swift moment, then I turned and caught, unmasked, the look that serpents carry in their eyes. And though you would not credit me with being wise, yet with a wisdom new to me that matched your very own, I lured that look from its remoteness to the garish light, and then I saw you, not as you seem to be, but as you are tonight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spring by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine. The new furrowed field, thoughts, memories yield, the pool in the vale down below, the half crazed mood to search the near wood where sap is beginning to flow. We are never too old, nor emotion too cold to thrill with the robin's first call. Each blossom's a gem we break from its stem, no matter how slender or tall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Alien's Love by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson A pilgrim I am on ways rough and uncouth, A stranger far off from the dreams of my youth. The longings that surge through my being today Are for things I remember, but lost yesterday. There's a lure to the past, and its charm ever clings. My soul is a slave to the love of these things. I can hear in my memory, in spring and in fall, A sweet welcome note of a robin's bright call. It echoes across fields of clover and wheat, Then dies faint away in a melody sweet. And the sun, oh, that sun when the day is newborn, Dying the landscape all pink in the morn. I gloat o'er each memory, I prize every tear, Each little reminder to me seems so dear. A picture I have in my memory hung Of a boundless wide sky in the twilight so young. Pale amethyst clouds against the pink and the blue, Mist-like waves flitting over this marvelous hue. The path through the wild wood I knew it by heart, Every twist, every turn, I could find in the dark. Oh, the charm of that landscape in memory clings Round the heart of an alien and tugs at its strings. So, too, is the picture and bright through the mist Of a dear little cabin, something like this, With an old gabled roof and small window panes, All gladsomely dripping with spring's gentle rains. An old-fashioned garden, a blaze as it were, with old-fashioned blooms and the perfume they bear. Oh, I am an alien, but the charm ever clings round the old rusty gate that creaks on its hinge. I remember the hearth. Oh, that hearth's amber gleams shines on the path of my maze tangled dreams, and the lure of the home. What a world in one name! 
and oh could i live it all over again though time the old traitor has silvered my hair and aged my form neath burdens of care through troubles and trials and sorrows i'll keep in the soul of my being these memories sweet end of poem this recording is in the public domain my diary by jeanette fraser henshaw read for LibriVox.org by t r love on valentine's day twenty twenty three its early page is rapturous with the transient dreams of youth so alive with expectations sweet with faith and truth here's a date of lost illusions then a page of broken dreams when sorrow came then friendship spiced all with rosy gleams i turn a sweet rose-scented leaf and like a breath from june love laughs at me between the lines then mocks me with its doom a letter from a friend and in my confidence reposed the history of her strange romance the wedding and the rose a day of happiness and mirth spent somewhere by the sea the petals of crushed violets i cherish tenderly a birth a death a precious gift from some one very dear then jotted down at intervals the things i hope and fear then a war-drenched censored message from the trenches over sea with the ghost of bygone laughter bubbling through it merrily then a line of some old love song too tender to forget and it tells me how i crooned it till my foolish eyes were wet each record waking echoes like a lonely cricket's chirr wafting me back through eons to dreams and things that were like hands from some mystic ocean the past is calling me through the medium of the pages of my gilt-edged diary end of poem this recording is in the public domain going home by jeanette fraser henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine I keep wondering every summer when the western clouds hang low If the sky that I remember has the same infinite glow If the little sparrows nested this summer in the comb And if the hummingbirds are singing in the Sharon tree back home And I wonder if the homestead at the bottom of the hill Cuddles, as it used to seem to in the shadows soft and still. If the gold of summer sunshine and the silver of its rain sprinkles jewels in the morning on each spotless window pane. If the vines and charming tangles climbed away beyond the door. Tonight the memory's sweeter than it's ever been before. The years that once were rosy have taken on a somberer tone. There's something always with me, weaving tender dreams of home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. November by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine. Across the azure brightness, a slender sunlight rift. In a melancholy mood, I watch the solemn white clouds drift. A crimson blaze is creeping round the trunks of trees at times, each a willing pillar standing to support the failing vines. Across the tender heart strings a sudden shaft of pain, stirring leaves of old-time memories as the birds turn south again, rekindling burnt-out embers on life's hearthstone bare and cold, keeping warm the past Novembers, touched with amber, rose, and gold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Life by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Inco. Life. It's the span between the cradle and the gap we call the grave. It's an epoch short and fleeting, where we labor, love, and save. It's the distance that we measure 
by the moments, days and years, and we pause amid its laughter to wonder at our tears. It's a bridge we are all building, twixt eternity and man. We find both truth and treason side by side on every span. It's a school in which we squander energy and time and brain. We often meet disaster where we thought to gather gain. It's a rugged, twisted pathway where the roses seldom grow, and our songs are most of sorrow and our mirth turned into woe. It's a gift we're not bestowing on a relative or friend, and like riches we can't take it with us at the journey's end. It's a season of existence where we test our love and might. It's the battleground of conscience where we skirmish, march and fight. It's a space where joy and sorrow finds the gateway to our lives and death's only a sweet stranger when the final day arrives. End of poem. This recording's in the public domain. Memory by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Deanna Lee It's the gallery where the artist hangs the picture of our life and he cares not if it's gloomy or aglow with golden light. It's a storehouse where we garner and remember all the years, the things that gave us pleasure and the cause of all our tears. It's the gateway to past sorrows, and it always stands ajar. It's the key to future pleasure, with the power to make or mar. It's a diary where we've written every cherished item plain, and each vivid, sacred etching stirs old memories and pain. It's a little cozy corner, a tranquil, quiet abode, a dream-filled space well hidden from the highway and the road. It's a voice that's never silent and a harp that's never still, waking echoes in our heart lobes with each vibrant, trembling thrill. It's a garden where we've planted, and in after years we see, each bud that first a petal is a rose named memory. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Memory by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org Memory is the feeling that comes stealing, stealing, stealing o'er your conscience. When you know your stony broke, and you wish some occult dealings would paralyze your feelings. When you hear your partner tell his standard joke. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To My Friend by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone The hearth, a wide, wide room, and me With that same old steadfast comrade memory Beside me bridging all too true life's all aloneness with sweet dreams of you a chair a good book and the answering flame the crackling hearth log speaking back your name the old clock marking off the hours in chimes that stir me from my reverie at times to drop me back as suddenly into my dreams sweeter than all the world's imaginings the hearth a wide wide room and me making a vivid bright reality of all the meaning nothing's running through the strange sweet personality of you the songs you sang that ended in a tear and your own sweet self so intimately near with all the golden shimmering things you wore that i in my humility had long forswore my unused nostrils sent to-night the fair sweet jasmine blossoms nestled in your hair 
tis midnight and my soul's athirst to hear your voice again quote verse on verse of classics that we studied you and i in the lost sunshiny days gone by o oh, little bursting bleeding heart of fire even your very faults i did admire i loved adored caressed and worshipped you you were so downright good and absolutely true you like a sparkling bright sunbeam but my heart always aching with a dream the hearth a wide wide room and my memory dear little friend come back again and see how soon i could forget most every loss and all the utter emptiness from crown to cross and all the burning tears i ever knew just hearing the sweet tinkling laugh of you seeing your dimples chase from brow to chin hearing your songs that had the tear-drops in and all your shimmering garments golden sheen would cure my heart of all its broken dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain My Elysium by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw, read for LibriVox.org by Bria Holmes. My Elysium, little brown house and solitude, friends and an amber hearth, tears if I feel like crying, laughter, romance, and mirth, a wild, unconventional garden, but fraught with a sweet repose where creepers twine unchastened and the lily bends to the rose little brown house and silence unquestioned but understood periods of noise and bustle thrilling its heart of wood the goodwill of men and children smiling and unafraid to enter my charming elysium and play in its speckled shade little brown house and solitude true friends as i said before to sympathize love and believe me though a heathen i am to the core end of poem this recording is public domain to death by jeanette fraser henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson You've come, you've come when least I thought you may To claim at last this suffering mortal clay. At last the horrid vision has come true. How long I feared and how long hated you, And how I fought you back long years agone, When fiery fevers scorched and parched my tongue. Then how I try to laugh at my own fears, but lo, I tremble now. You're here, you're here. You are the monster from which none can hide. Your powerful presence cannot be denied. You've hounded me these many, many years, and mocked at all my sorrows and my tears. At last you've wrapped me in your clammy robes, and laid your icy hand on my heart lobes. You tramp where no one else has ever trod. At last, I am your victim, and, O oh God, teach me how to die. Forgive all sin. This is your vengeance, death. You win. You win. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hello, April by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw read for LibriVox.org Hello, April, is it you? Faith, we know your smiles and sighs, with the teardrops trickling through ever-changing clouds and skies, teasing us with sun, then rain, but we love you just the same. The soft rustling of your skirt 
has a magic touch, I ween, and the essence of your breath turns the hillside grass all green. Spring's first lilting, quivering note comes from out your teary throat. Irish April, with your smile, Southland's wind and songbirds come, braving winter's lingering chill, but believing in your sun. Hello, April, how de do? My, we're glad to know it's you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The One I Love by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Deanna Lee. I loved a man, a little man, but he was not for me. He was only two years old when I was twenty three. His cheeks like velvet to my touch, they held youth's flag unfurled. I so admired the lovely way his silken locks were curled. I loved a man, I love him still. He's stalwart, twenty-three. His lips are firm, but yet they press each other tenderly. His cheek is tanned a leafy brown, and in his gray-blue eyes, a look so keen, so brave and true, like shafts from summer skies. I knew he was not mine to keep. He's dressed in brown khaki. And I'm wishing back the years when I was twenty-three. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. News from the Street by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone You'll be dying to hear of your rival, my dear. Mag Allen, that little coquette. She's flirted outrageous with all of the boys and never got one of them yet. Kathleen O'Leary's still single, sweet girl, an angel as everyone knows, with the eyes of her looking like rapture from heaven and her face like a sweet-smelling rose. You'll be wild that I'm sure as I would be myself to hear all you can hear of Barney. I'm sorry to tell you he's fighting in France like the rest of the boys from Killarney. Now don't let me think that your fast-falling tears will spoil this fine letter I send. I needn't have told you such news, darling girl, but my nature could never pretend. Mrs. Mahoney has gotten some twins. Michael O'Keefe's hit the trail. I mean that he's under the shamrocks, my dear, and his widow is terribly frail. But I'll give you the truth from a real Irish heart. Take their blunders and blarney and all. I'd sooner love all of them only a bit than a few of them never at all. This island is green as the sea that it is, and just like a dream gift from God, is the dear little shamrock that angel kiss bloom. Oh, how I love the old sod. We're not a bad sort you have left here behind. You see, I'm the blarney itself. But I'm true to the home of me father's and yours, and I'm sending me love to yourself. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Looms That Wove the Khaki by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone It is hung beneath the emblem with the white and crimson bars and the blue-flecked eyes look courage from the shadow of the stars. It's a picture of a soldier, just a noble Yankee son, and the looms that wove the khaki and the crimson bars are one. 
all the things he cannot tell us all the dangers that menace are all written like a story on his wistful homesick face a soldier to the last he'll be till the dreadful war is done for the looms that wove the khaki and the crimson bars are one o oh, soldier it's your picture hung beneath the crimson bars you are fighting for our safety while we walk beneath the stars we will cherish love and lord it to our children's children's sons for the looms that wove the khaki and the stars and stripes are one end of poem this recording is in the public domain Content by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw, read for LibriVox.org by Lindsay Montgomery. I'm interested in all the news, although I do not even see the passing show. I only sit at home in my porch swing and have the neighbors tell me everything. I do not need to see the baseball game, then come home tired, disgusted, limp, and lame. I do not need to cross the sun hot street and rave at every step my aching feet. I sit at home and read the news, that's all, but know the ins and outs of Cobb's baseball. I know, although I was not there to see, how some yelled punk and others said T.T. The bum play and the bleachers, he's a frost. Crestfallen faces when Detroit lost. I followed once the heels of every crowd and heard the praises linger long and loud. But now I sit at home and tranquilly I choose to save the leather in my new black shoes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Road's End by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Curtis Richardson. In night's sweet gloom I fall asleep brain weary and heart sore, and seek in dreams the rest I crave from turmoil and life's war. Unconscious of all care and strife, at the day's sweet tender close, then memory mingles in my dreams the dewdrop and the rose. Abrupt I'll find the sweet road's end, with strife and care all past, and tired and weary of the road, I seek the gloom at last. That little space so fraught with peace at the day's sweet, tender close. Then mingled on my pulseless breast death's myrtle and life's rose. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Moving Van by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw, read for LibriVox.org by T.R. Love on Valentine's Day, 2023. There's a mirrorless mirror, a pictureless frame, and the dining room table does not look just the same. The sugar and butter we frantically hope is not fatally mixed with Dutch cleanser and soap. The treasures we value and fearful to lose are found in a muddle with blacking and shoes. Our good Sunday bonnet where the skillet should be, the drapery and muslins smell of salada tea. Our fine underclothing and good suit of clothes are faintly perfumed with mustard and cloves. Describe all the horrors? Oh, I never can that falls in the wake of the old moving van. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Her Dream by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw read for LibriVox.org by Bookworm360 or maybe Cordelia. Her Dream Mary Martha Liza Brooks had a hunch she'd write a book while the youthful years were slipping over her head but she followed custom's rule, and when she was out of school, being very poor, she could do naught but wed. 
Then she settled down for life. She was Mother Seamstress' wife, but all the while she kept that dream back in her brain. Through the years of care and work, she was game. She didn't shirk, but the dream kept living lurid just the same. Then when she was turning gray, all her children went away, for some of them had babies in a home. She had time to rest and think, then that dream, intact, distinct, domineered, distracted, claimed her for its own. So Mary Martha Liza Brooks wrote a startling taking book. It became the craze of half the reading world, and all the folks who turned her down gossiped all around the town, saying they knew Eliza when she was a girl. When you're feeling old and blue, keep your dreams all sweet and true. Never let the young cow's task put out the flame. And some day, though others sneer, you'll get the vision straight and clear, and realize that dream back in your brain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. His Dissection by Jeanette Fraser Hinshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Bill Mosley When God made me, it seemed, oh gee, he thought t'was not enough, but sprinkled lots of perfumed thoughts among my brainy stuff. I wish instead he'd merely said, no dreams or visions hazy but as it is oh well gee whiz i'm nearly going crazy end of poem this recording is in the public domain a dream by jeanette fraser henshaw read for librivox dot org by booker three sixty a dear little dream came tripping into my life one day, crowning the hours with a halo and perfumed them with the rose of May. And oh, how I coddled and loved it, I worshipped it night and day. I hugged it, embraced and caressed it, and pleaded with it to stay. But on the dawn of a cold gray morning, when I especially felt forlorn, I found it and oh, it was broken and shattered and bruised and torn. But still I know I shall keep it, and always remember the day when I loved it, embraced and caressed it, sweet dream of the rose of May. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Little Girl by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Booker360 I'm not fit for this office I'm holding In mothering you, little girl As your features I'm ever adoring Kissing each braid and curl Such motherly nonsense you waken Way down in the soul of me The things that I missed, longed for, and loved I'm beholding them all in thee Oh, could I keep you ever beside me with braid and curl? No shade of shame in your wide young eyes, my no known, known dear little girl. But God seems to will things different, and after a while you'll go, like the rest to have your sorrows and loves and cares and woe. For each life has its own experience, each soul its mute misery. You'll suffer, I know, in your grief alone, in your own Gethsemane. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Take It From Me by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine. I get sick of washing dishes morning, night, and noon. Tired of sweeping cobwebs with a feministic broom. Sick of polishing of floorboards where there ain't no carpets laid. Tired of making shiny tumblers stand like soldiers on parade. Sick of make believing muffins is a pot of pork and beans. Sick of green tea masquerading without granulated cream. Such things spoil my little meter, detract glory from the rhyme. Sure, it ain't no celebration making water taste like wine. Conservation gets me nowhere, only hoovering jam. Plague take the brooms and brushes. I wish I were a man. Then I'd sure go over yonder in the middle of the fuss and wallop him that's making such a darn fool out of us. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A request by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw, read for LibriVox.org by Inkel. A request. You've asked me to write a few verses. I'm trying to grant the desire, but the strains that I love best are broken, so this rhyme will be lacking in fire. Is it strange you think me dejected, for the furrows you see on my brow are but tokens of useless endeavour to be what I'll never be now? 
my beautiful dreams have all perished, my ambitions were never fulfilled, I would that my heart and emotions were dead as my dreams and as still. End of poem. This recording's in the public domain. Now and Then by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibreVox.org by Inco Now and Then Back across the vanished years that I'll never see again Is a field of purple violets where I wander now and then Brighter than my vision keen, sweeter than my sweetest dream Is the memory of that shady purple glen There's a cottage in a country where the dream folk keep their dreams It is bathed in mellow sunlight Lacy shadows fleck its beams, and since I'm turning grey, oftentimes I look away to that country where the leaves are always green. There's a lane all maple shaded, and a limpid speckled pool, where white starry daisies nestled, much more tempting than my school, and in memory's corridor, where I keep my treasured store, hangs a picture of that shady nook so cool. So oftentimes I fain would wander in the field and shady glen, and I'm yearning for the cottage and the maple speckled lane, and though I'm turning grey, of the same old dream each day, just to pick those purple violets now and then. End of poem. This recording's in the public domain. A reply to a gift by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw, read for LibriVox.org by T. R. Love on Valentine's Day. 2023. In Remembrance of the Happy Days was written on the card. More and many happy New Year's is the wish I'm wishing hard. Touched to the core and speechless from the thoughts that filled my brain, and in fancy I turned backward to that friendship once again. And I clasped their hands in memory across the years of time. Truly friendship lives forever, Defying age and wealth and clime. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Going Back by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Curtis Richardson. Sometime, someday, I'm going back across the span of years and reason out the mystery of all my sighs and tears. I'll see the little hidden path, the road I could not find, though faithfully I searched and searched, missed hope and tears half blind. The kindness I'll understand meant only for my good. The actions back of all the things I so misunderstood. And how I chose the wrong way out with gruesome doubts and fears, then lost myself in all this maze of brooding bitter years. And how I longed so for the light, I had no peace or rest. And why the bridge I needless crossed, I'll know then what is best. I'll ford the restless, turbulent stream that crossed the beaten track. I'll finish out my broken dream sometime when I go back. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Sweetheart by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine. Across the borderland of mystic sleep, I take the vivid picture of her face. The daylight memories, the sweetnesses of her, are with my sleeping fancies interlaced. Black eyes like moonlight paths and dreams, though love drunken I still drink their magic mist, and claim the charms that make life worth the cost, lips meant only for mine to kiss. I whisper to myself, Florenza, that's her name, each letter in itself a joy complete. With conscious pride I link them with my own, and wonder why they sound so strangely sweet. Life has no charm if mine she may not be. First, sweetest, last, and only girl for me. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. One Friend by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org A friend like him I'll never find. He knew each mood that turned my mind. We did not need to speak. We understood. Without the aid of utterance, each word that friends in confidence are apt to speak. He's dead. The tears flow down my cheek. My sorrow weighs me like a log. He was a true friend, my old dog. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. New Year's Memoirs by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Inco. New Year's Memoirs. We have pictures in our memories from the well remembered years, and the vision grows the brighter when we glimpse it through our tears. There's a circle of bright faces, rosy in the firelight's glow, each one happy and contented, that was New Year's long ago. Then the world all tempting, smiling, beckoned to them, one and all, and with dreamy face they listened to that never-ending call. So time robbed the pleasant household, and the hearth is bare and cold. True, twill never be rekindled, as it was in days of old. Some have tasted triumph's sweetness, some are happy, some are fair, some are comrades of disaster, some companions to despair. For the battle cry lured many, and the trench holds some tonight, who will know no more tomorrows, never more be called to fight. Some have gathered gold aplenty from the world's rich bounder's store. Some have travelled far, and maybe they'll be strangers evermore. Some have crossed the one dark river, and will never more be seen, till the trumpet of the master wakes us all from our last dream. End of poem. This recording's in the public domain. To One in Heaven by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw, read for LibriVox.org by Riley. After you died, I could not bring myself to see that I must kiss the cross and bear it patiently, that I must still go on and pulse with life and breath while you have met the great adventure, death. And when I kissed you through my falling tears, I thought of all your busy, careworn years, of all the bitter pain, my loss, and then of this, Perhaps, e'en now, you feel the heavenly kiss of balmy breezes in that distant bourne from which no mortal ever did return. Perhaps your robes are made of lovely things beyond the power of my imaginings. And in that heaven we pictured up above, I hope God gives you all the things you love. I hope the angels welcome freely given on this your premature return to heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. As a Woman Sees It by Jeanette Fraser Henschel Read for LibriVox.org by Jess War is paid for with our money And twice overpaid in pain And in years of anxious waiting While the teardrops fall like rain while a few have gained the prestige and the power they long wished for, unmindful of the sorrow in the little house next door. O oh, we true and love our country, but we would not have it marred. We gloat o'er every emblem, blue crowned and crimson barred. But we see past all the glory, where waiting hearts are sore, facing cheerless sad tomorrows in a little house next door. War is paid for by our husbands, by the blood of precious sons, but it's only hell, no matter what's been paid or said or done, and the few will have all glory and love's greeting after war, but there will be no such tomorrows in some little house next door. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Gobbler's Lament by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Deanna Lee. Yesterday an egg I was, today a turkey fat. I faced the chopping block with no white feather in my hat. My supple limbs are rudely tied, I'm cast in the woodshed. With thoughts of what a feast I'll be for someone when I'm dead. So I'll be butchered in my prime. It is, alas, my fate. No nobler cause but just to give some kid the stomach ache. Woe is me, my plumage too, that proudly I displayed. Will make a pillow for the couch, a duster for the maid. It is, alack, a tragic fate, the end I sadly greet. Abandoned in my last lone hours, with fetters on my feet. This snowy linen has no charms, but this, my latest breath, a gobbler I have been in life, will gobbled be in death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. America by Jeanette Fraser Henschel. Read for LibriVox.org by Sigrika. A matchless broad horizon, abundant, healthful soil, yielding the farmer's treasures and nature's paper toil. Serene, majestic mountains, cool streams sparkling down, set in the landscape's bosom like jewels in a crown. It's a lover's love I give you, home of the golden rod. To the foreign, its protection. To me, it's home and God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Extemporaneous by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. My friends have all been asking, in a manner most polite, if I get any money for the dope I often write, or if I get any laurels or a boost along toward fame, does anybody praise me and does anybody blame? I can't answer all these questions in a satisfactory way for the other fellows saying the same things I want to say. But I don't get any laurels for my literary dope nobody ever paid me for a blooming thing i've wrote i've written praise of dr s i've roasted real estate i've boosted times and ledgers at a ripping speedy rate nobody ever thanked me nobody ever blames but i keep on writing verses and they print them just the same i will never be a millionaire or buy a little home with the money that i'm getting there's no laurels on my dome i don't give a continental what the critics have to say they may give me blame or censor i will go my own sweet way they may give me blame or censor maybe lemons or soft soap they may rave and tear their whiskers when they read this awful dope I should worry for their laurels, or their lemons, or their praise. I'll get what's coming to me at the parting of the ways. Then with hands serenely folded, I don't know but yet they might put laurels on my forehead when I can no longer write. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Memories Dear by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Inkel O Memories Dear My heart calls over the wide, bridgeless span And I'm longing each day for a clasp of your hand My soul is a crater of burning old pain Come over the wreckage and woe me again O memory sweet The robins are calling, O oh, can you not hear Or see from your dream port my fast-falling tear The future is dark and my youth it has fled and I, safe for anguish, am pulseless and dead, O oh, memories dear. 
come over the crumbled vast waste of my dreams, I'm reaching my willing hands over the stream, I'm loving you still with each thought of my brain, come over the wreckage and woe me again, O oh, memories dear. The myrtle and ivy are green on your grave, in the cold years I try to be cheerful and brave, your features before me forever I'll keep, till I rest by your side in that long, dreamless sleep, O oh, memories dear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Would-Be Husband By Jeanette Fraser Henschel Read for LibriVox.org By Bobby W. If she dresses to please you, do not look past her. Do not miss the love light lurking in the blue. Don't forget to praise her for her dimples for I know she'll do the same dear things for you. If the day's been long and cold and full of trouble, perhaps it's been the same with her at home. Do not turn her sunny June into December. Life's too short, and many of us go alone. If she's listless, tired, perhaps she's just love-hungry. If from her cheeks the roses fade away, do not forget the charms that used to lure you and the dear old tender things you used to say. You've a right to smile as well as she of evenings. She'll play up, I know, if you do your part. On this voyage that you're taking, son, remember, life's too short to carry with us broken hearts. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Homesick Heart by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Nikisha Luckett. Oh, I must go home again. I can't sing or work or sleep. Even time is just the same. No ambition in my feet. Never knowing what I do, thoughts keep drifting back to you. Homesick? Well, I suppose I is. Sick enough, I know it show. For the welcome that I knows just inside my cabin door. And the tootin' of a train makes me wow for home again. There's a big lump in my throat and a tugging at my heart. And a feeling I can't shake makes my eyelids sting and smart. Voices through the falling rain calling me back home again. Thoughts of how the April rain makes the home flower sweet to pick. Keep a trooping through my brain. That's another lonesome trick. And every time I hears a train, I wants to go back home again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. October by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Riley. How can I write a fitting verse to hazy brown October when there's so very many things to make me sane and sober? The maple leaves are turning gold, Virginia creeper crimson, amber tints across the field, bewildering and winsome. The war might be in Amsterdam, in Norwalk or New Haven. I'm still delighted with the way sweet nature's been behaving. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Road Home by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone In October The road might be enchanting With a blaze of rose and gold And rich ripe tints of crimson Like dream things never told Then in unexpected places At the river's sudden bend You're restless and so eager For the greeting at the end lonely places waiting like harps with untuned strings silence and solitude where only hearts can sing but above it all emotion like thought transmission sends just a hint of half the pleasure in the greeting at the end there's a rift of autumn sunlight and dry leaves rustling the upland's blue horizon and the wild geese on the wing then there's warm hearts kind and tender with the words so quick to send 
all the looked-for joy and comfort through the greeting at the end end of poem this recording is in the public domain sympathy by jeanette fraser henshaw read for LibriVox.org by nikisha luckett sympathy thou medium through which another seems to feel and know and see that another soul may languish for that strange thing sympathy human hearts lie silent waiting like the viol or the lute for a touch of some vibration to stir the strings so strangely mute human souls are all so woven with the web of destiny that they thrill and vibrate even at the thought of sympathy end of poem this recording is in the public domain. His Last Verse by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Lindsay Montgomery A scribbler with ambition wrote some charming verse. Some verses were inspiring, some could not be worse. So the editors all canned him, shipped him back his charming dope. Then in tears and desperation, these lines he sadly wrote. My pen is badly blunted. I've wrote verse by the score. I wrote about a thousand. Then again I wrote some more. I've used a lot of paper and postage stamps as well. And you never even thanked me, nor said my lines were swell. I do not mean to give offense but I think you're mighty rude. I could cuss a blooming streak for your base ingratitude. If the printer's devil gets this and puts it on the shelf, have mercy for the author, for he has none for himself. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Consolation by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine Honey, though the winter has everything froze up, let's think about the violets and the fragrant lily cups, the long ferns dank and slender and the buds that burst their bloom. Let's forget the ice of winter and the joys of early June and how the warm sun welcomes Mr. Robin on the wing. And the sweet crabapple blossoms are all coaxing him to sing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Deserted by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Written by request. From the depths of despair where you left me, to the merciless level of scorn, then to moments of torture and anguish that rack me and leave me forlorn, through night's pitiless darkness not sleeping, unable to rest the night through, still finding myself not believing the unexplained actions of you. Oft times my own memory appalls me, tricks me into thinking of you, and I find myself foolishly dreaming sweet dreams that will never come true. The perfume of roses comes stealing from out of the garden like wine, but this heart knows no youth. It is breaking and marks not the passing of time. God, how can I go on? I'm just human, and how bear the rack and the pain? Instead of a throne where sits reason, I've a place of torment for a brain. There's moments of madness that seize me, and I ponder life's peaceful decline. And I wonder if death in his keeping keeps sorrows, and will he keep mine? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love Song by Jeanette Fraser Henschel Read for LibriVox.org by Bobby W. Walking in gardens and thinking of you, Seeing the starlight the long night through, Not sensing the daybreak, Benumbed by the pain, Of hours spent in longing To see you again. Hearing of voices, Each one like your own, 
your features in visions like dreams never known. The days all unnumbered, nighttime is vain, when I am so longing to see you again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Game of Life by Jeanette Fraser Henschel. Read for LibriVox.org by Bobby W. I keep thinking each day that I'm living, in half the dark lonely night, of the problems that often perplex us, and the heart-trending sorrows that vex us, in this wearisome game we call life. I arise on the bright dewy morning, with my plans all so cheerfully laid, then a cloud unforeseen has arisen, and dimmed the bright path of my vision, and I'm suddenly cold and afraid. My hopes are all bright in the morning, contented I feel with my lot. But before the noon hour and the evening, I'm with troubles, possessed and believing. Life's useless, and God has forgot. So it is with us all in life's morning, with faith in the future and trust. But at noontime our dreams are not master, and we're facing misfortune's disaster. And the picture of dreams in the dust. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Marriage by Jeanette Fraser Henschel. Read for LibriVox.org by Bobby W. Whether it's heaven or whether it's hell or whether it's in between, whether it's oodles of joyous bliss or a broken, shattered dream, it may be neutrality, war, or peace. A story too sweet to tell. The word may stand for a world of things, whether it's heaven or hell. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Friends by Jeanette Fraser Henschel, read for LibriVox.org by Nikisha Luckett. Friends, for the falseness of our comrades, time never makes amends, save when we stop to ponder the loveliness of friends. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Goodbyes by Jeanette Fraser Henschel. Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine. Once I had a little playmate in the dear days long ago. We were always together, for we loved each other so. One day she came and kissed me with the teardrops in her eye. Then in my little notebook I wrote my first goodbye. Then pure, sweet love came swiftly into my life one day, and for a while my happiness was sweet as life's young May. He kissed my lips and forehead. We parted with a sigh. And I thought my heart was breaking when I wrote goodbye, goodbye. I wrote goodbye in sorrow to the dearest little chum. I and my schoolmates wrote it when our parting days had come. Then to sisters and my brothers and to the old folks. Oh, the pain I suffered when we parted. And I wrote goodbye again. Then on my marriage morning, when I became a wife, I wrote farewell forever to my single, carefree life. I faced the future bravely, without a tear or sigh. Quite cheerfully across the page, three times I wrote goodbye. I've said goodbye in sunshine. I've called it through the rain. I've heard it said with laughter and sobbed through lips of pain. Perhaps when death comes creeping to dim my brightening eye, I'll stay his clammy hand until I write my last goodbye. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Come Back Again, dedicated to my friends, by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine.
Christmas Day seems glorious, with its wealth of gift and cheer, but the thing that makes it lovely is a true friend somewhere near. And they're wishing you more New Year's, and you're wishing them the same, and when evening shadows part you, you invite them back again. The sunshine seems the brighter for their added bit of cheer, and our burdens seem the lighter when their sunny face is near. And you say, come back tomorrow, come back and back again. You cannot come too often or stay too long, my friend. Oh, how we strew the blossoms above our precious dead, and leave heartbreaks unmended and the tender things unsaid. In life one's time is precious, but twould ease an ache or pain if we'd whisper, genuinely, when I'm lonely, come again. So when you're summing up my failings and my faults so tenderly, Remember, you're the pattern of the friend I'd like to be. Though my failings cause you sorrow and my blunders give you pain, forgive me, oh, forgive me, and be sure and come again. Your friend, Jeanette Henshaw. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Earlier Poems Take Me Back Written When a Child by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine Take me back, O oh mother do, where my boyfriends were true blue, where I had my little bedroom way upstairs, where a dozen boys or more came to play at our back door. Though we tracked in snow, it seemed you didn't care. We used to have a blazing hearth, and our home was filled with mirth. Oh, I hate this living in a measly flat, and it seems, my mother dear, when you moved us all out here, that you shipped your loving family off the map. Oh, at night I cannot sleep, though I count a million sheep. I'm so lonesome I could dig myself a grave. Dear Ma, have a heart for me. You only say real cross to me. You better hush your crying and behave. I'm so lonesome. Take me back to my little playmate Jack. Can't you see that I must play just all alone? I don't like it here at all. And before the robins call, I'll pack my little grip and go back home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Garret by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine In the dark and dim old garret, beneath the slanting roof, There's a tale told in a moment, quite enough to fill a book. Oh, what thoughts I weave in fancy, and my tears they flow in vain. My sadness is re-echoed by the falling of the rain. In the far-off, tiny corner, dusty and begrimed with age, Stands a desk once used by children, on its shelf a blotted page. I turn my face to hide a teardrop, and my heart nigh breaks with pain as I listen to the falling of the gentle springtime rain. Esther's little dolls and playthings, Jimmy's engine on the floor, two pairs of wee worn booties, either side the crumbling door. In fancy I can see them and hear their voice again while the raindrops make me music on the garret window pane. I see two little figures pleading for a goodnight kiss, and in fancy I embrace them in their innocence and bliss, but they've gone away forever. Advancing years have played the game, and my eyes are filled with tears as I listen to the rain. But in spite of tears, I smiled at the pictures on the wall, that childish hands had painted, dearer to me than all. So the garret told its story, and my heart is racked with pain. Thus I fall asleep, listening to the patter of the rain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Sad Tea Time by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Lauren Fontaine I was awful sorry when, as Ma says, brother wed, 
It just doesn't seem like home at all. I'd just as soon be dead. But he got the nicest kind of wife. She's as sweet as she can be. The only time it feels like home is when they come to tea. Ma makes the nicest kind of cake with coconut on top. She has plum pies and pudding and taters steaming hot. Then after that, around the fire, Big Brother sings to me. So I have the bestest kind of fun when they both come to tea. But when he goes away again, it makes me feel so bad. And I wonder who will be the next to make Ma's heart feel sad. She smiles a funny kind of smile and says it might be me. I couldn't think of such a thing. Could you? Why, Jiminy! Father's hair is getting white. Mother's growing thin. Sometimes I see the teardrops start and drop off from her chin. There used to be whole six of us, but now there's only three. The vacant place makes me feel blue when we gather around to tea. Could you think of me away from home? Away? Away far off? Away from my dear Ma and Pa where everything is rough? No, I've decided here and now that I will always be right close to my own Pa and Ma and always home for tea. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nightmare by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw, read for LibriVox.org by T. R. Love, on Valentine's Day, 2023. We rush through the night o'er an unthought-of road. We can fly like a bird and hop like a toad. We could have oogles and oogles and oogles of fun, but our clothes all come off and we never can run. The troubles we have are heap much galore, for we're bare as a bird in some grocery store. We go chasing around in this fool of a dream, a dear little sweetheart, all peaches and cream, till quick as a flash, oh, much quicker than that, she turns into a dude with a pink lace cravat. To our horror, we're left by someone in the lurch, dressed just in pajamas inside of the church. Feeling less than a penny, we're awfully sore while trying to find an impossible door. At last, we're released by a strange little elf, stranger than ever, dressed just like ourselves. We ride on the moon through oceans of blue. In spite of apparel, we're enjoying it, too. In a minute, we fall to the earth like a stone, then ponder another mad flight through the zone. We land in Paris with servants so sleek and live to the tune of a million a week. Then Biff in a jiffy were struck on the bean, awakened at last from that nightmarish dream. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Happy Molly by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org by Riley Happy Molly had a smile for everyone she met. Happy Molly was some baby, you can surely bet. Molly also was a winner everywhere she went, but she married a mean sinner without Pa's consent. Happy Molly was not happy after she was wed, and I know that she'd much rather have been dead. Troubles followed Molly's marriage, about nine or maybe ten. Neighbors vied with one another that she'd never smile again. After many years of trouble and accumulated fat, which made poor tortured Molly look like the U.S. map, this ends my tragic story. Everything's been said. Wipe the tear from your left glimmer. Happy Molly's dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wishes by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Riley. I wish I could have a dear little dream that nobody else could smash. I wish I could build a castle that wouldn't come down with a crash. Wish I had a dollar that wouldn't be spent and a rose that would not fade away. I wish that life's winter were sweeter by far than the sunshine and blossoms of May. Wish I had a laugh that knew when to laugh and a tear when it ought to be shed. The right thing to say for the good and the bad. 
the same for the living and dead. I wish for a friend who would always be true, for a hand to help those who are down. I wish my illusions, ideals, and dreams refused to be faded and brown. Wish I always had a kind word for the old, the same for the frolicking young, in moments of sorrow, temptations, and pride, for a bridle to be put on my tongue. Indeed, if these wishes were granted to me, and to the rest of the world, one and all, faith, we'd have little need of the Bible or Christ, and we wouldn't need heaven at all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Angel's Mission by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw. Read for LibriVox.org by Riley. An angel had a mission on the frost white world below, so left the gates of heaven through swirling clouds of snow. On a dark street all forsaken was a poor child in despair, kneeling in the frost and cold. She breathed this tiny prayer. For just one friend, the angel heard and very strangely smiled at such an ancient time-worn prayer from such a little child. The angel touched the child's cold face and straightway dried each tear, the child a-wondering at the face so marvelously dear. No more the little child was cold, no longer left alone. That countenance that was so dear was but the Lord's Christ own. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Since Mama Has Gone Away by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibreVox.org by Inco Since Mama Has Gone Away Everything's as dark and black, just as dark as night, Since they took Mama away from me, away from out my sight. And it's oh, so dark and cold, even through the day, There isn't any fun at all. Since Mama's gone away, there's no one now to smooth my hair and pat my burning cheek, to tuck me up at night in bed or cover up my feet. There's no one now to laugh and talk and do like Mama did. She's gone to heaven to live up there. That is what the preacher said. But everything is covered round with sadness and with gloom. They didn't promise me at all that I'd see my Mama soon. The thing that puzzles me the most, and I would like to know, she can stay away so long from me, her only boy. What folks say about you doesn't matter, for the thinking only matters less. But when the clover waves above you to a friend who truly loves you, you're like a sweet remembered dream of happiness. End of poem. This recording's in the public domain. Lest We Forget by Jeanette Fraser Henschel, read for LibriVox.org, by Bobby W. When life is all December, and the lowering clouds of fate seem to turn your humble pathway into storm and dread and hate. When the daily path is dripping with the cold rains of despair, and there's not a cheering glimmer round the debris anywhere. When you long for understanding in a hand clasp warm and true, it's as well that you remember such luxuries are few. When the future is not tempting and the past is just as gray and the end of all your troubles seem a weary age away. When the friendship that you long for and the smile you often crave have no deeper subtle meaning and the world is cold and grave. When you're looking for a something that will thrill you through and through, it's as well that you remember such luxuries are few. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bless the Boy by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw Read for LibriVox.org To Mr. Cowan I wish, dear sir, to beg of you To please grant me the pleasure In writing just a line or two Bid welcome to your treasure Many 
may rejoice with you, may nothing mar your joy. I, for one, doth plead of heaven a blessing for your boy. Pure and innocent, sweet and fair, spotless, costly, priceless gem, dropped as a star from yonder heaven among the ways of men. The path for him may rugged be, it may be dreary, rough and wild. Whatever may be in the plan, may heaven protect the child. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Stardust by Jeanette Fraser Henshaw.